everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, I'm yet again trapped away from home. Um, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to share with you another one of my um, pieces of literature, a little prized document I have. I have this pristine copy of the Jaguar XK Series Accessories 1999 edition. Um, I have not got the very earliest one, which is something I'm, I'd like to get, because obviously I've got the earliest car. But um, this is one that was printed in uh, the 10th month of 1998. So it's probably the second edition, to be fair. And I want to share with you because some great images and also some nice secrets of the XK8 to be found within uh, that are quite interesting, at least to me. So here we go into the book. Hopefully you'll all forgive a little bit of unsteady camera work. I'm doing this one-handed. I have no tripod here in a hotel room with me. Uh, first thing is, again, like a lot of the Jaguar brochures um, that I've got, really nice paperwork. And the image, as you can see, looks like it's sat on top as a separate piece of the front cover but that is just about the print quality and there is no join there that is one piece of paper it just looks like a photograph glued to the front of this nice grain paper so nice image nice book so first image is of a coupe sporting some flute wheels, my particular favourite. I am quite biased in that. And as we start to move into the body of the book, <coughs> we get to the accessories. And again, you've got that first image of the wheels and it's showing the flute, which is a seven, uh, an 18 inch wheel, sorry and the revolver, which is a standard equipment, where it's a 17-inch uh, wheel, and the image appears to show chrome, which, as this is a UK publication, is reasonably unusual in that we really don't see much in the way of chrome revolvers. I know in the States you guys get quite a few. Um, a couple of the original equipment accessories, alloy gear knob and rear stainless surround for the number plate. Obviously a UK spec number plate fits that. Um, first really interesting element of this book for me is this page. So here we have the wheels which um, I have on my car, flute. They are an option um, and they are 18 inch. And as you can see, fronts are eight inch, rears are nine inch. So they're staggered wheels, which the original wheels, 17 inches, weren't. So switching to the flute wheels means you've got staggered wheels. But that's not the most interesting thing on this page. For me, it's this image. Because that wheel is not, to my mind, a Jaguar XK8 wheel at all. Indeed, it says 17 inch XJR. So does that mean that you could have your XK8 with XJR wheels? It's possible, they'll fit, but I've never ever seen an XK8 sporting those wheels. Maybe it'll look amazing, I don't know. Um, we go on to the next page and it's talking all about the mobile phone, which you could have as an optional extra in your car, where it'll be located, the couple of different holders for it inside the armrest or beside the uh, center console. But for me again, the most interesting thing, look at the SIM cards. So as you can see, you could have these unique limited edition collectors SIM cards. I wonder how much these would be worth these days. 
because they can't have been that many issued and they certainly wouldn't have carried on for too long. So we've got all sorts of classic Jaguars represented on the SIM cards. Beautiful. The next image, not so interesting. So we've got a uh, pouch you could buy to hold your CDs uh, to go with the optional CD player. Quite a common um, extra on many cars. On the next page we've got some of the packs. Um, and I'm going to move down this list so we get to on the right the headlamp beam converters and these are the contact lens type as i'd call it it's basically just a clear lens that goes over the top of your headlight uh, exactly the same as a headlight protector but with a pre-attached black mask which blocks off some of the light and we were talking about this in a previous um, secrets video when looking at the headlights it cuts out a lot of light. You're not moving the beam. You are just blocking off some useful beam. So it reduces the light levels considerably. To really change your vehicle over, you need to do changes to the internal masks inside your projector headlights. Um, this one is my uh, goal at some stage. The rechargeable torch located in glove box. And we've looked previously at the glove box in one of our secrets videos and looked at the little aperture that's to the left of the wider aperture at the top of the glove box. The wide aperture is for your lever bound um, folder, which holds things like your radio codes, your service manual. The left hand pouch is always empty and you can pop pens and bits and pieces in it. But Jaguar did have an accessory which is a rechargeable torch. And obviously the back of that element up there would need to be wired in order to charge what looks like an OBD2 style connector. Very unusual. I've never seen one in real life. I don't even know if uh, they were ever sold, if all I know, this is just a picture. Um, but I'd be interested to get hold of one of those. More standard fare on the top of the next page. And a repeat of the image off the front cover, which I think is very James Bond. Um, the skis on the ski rack on the boot lid of your convertible. Couldn't be much more James Bond. And a couple of options for traction in the snow. The uh, left hand one, which I'm a bit focused problem. There we go. Looking again quite James Bond esque. Um, like an aluminium spider with straps attached to it. Okay. So the next double spread has a nice image of a Jaguar XK8 illuminated by a helicopter spotlight and that is to advertise Tracker um, which certainly in the UK is a reasonably well-known company and um, I don't know if they're so dominant at the moment but they certainly were um, the tracker system that can be applied to your vehicle and that is for the UK only, as you see there. There's a bit of a theme going to go on now, and maybe you read different things into it than I do, but here we go. We've looked at this device in a previous Secrets video. If you have a UK car, it should have that in the boot cavity behind the pump for your convertible roof, if you've got a convertible, or certainly behind where the um, CD player is. Um, and it's an inclination sensor used to detect your vehicle being jacked up or towed away without the alarm being disarmed. And you'll note, standard in the UK. 
not the rest of the world where it was an option. Um, we've got uh, another device I've never seen installed, which is a lockable safe. Um, again, an image of wheels, which I've never seen on an XK8. But locking wheel nuts, standard in the UK. Mm, seeing a theme here. Um, then we've got the security etching. We've got the steering wheel lock. And we have, very interesting in my head anyway, alpha dots. Alpha dots, and this image doesn't really help at all, um, are very, very small dots, which are sprayed from a spray gun like you'd spray paint on your car in a fluid into various positions around the vehicle. They're so small that basically it's an impossible task to eliminate them all from your vehicle. Um, and also it's very difficult for us as owners to go find them and see if they've got them installed. Both of my cars, both previous XK8s, there is one location where I know these are and um, is reasonably accessible. And as long as you've not scrubbed these things off thinking it's overspray, because it really is, they are that small, um, you might be able to find them on yours. So if you've got a UK car, look on the bracket that holds your battery down. If there's a little element of it that looks a little bit like dusty overspray, get your magnifying glass on it, and what you'll find is the VIN number. And these have been sprayed on the underside of your car, in the engine bay, uh, throughout the interior, in the boot, and on the battery and battery bracket. Um, and again, you'll note, standard in the UK. So, are we learning that around about the 1997, 1999 period, the UK was a hotbed of car crime? Well, it was. These blow my mind. I have no idea, because the picture doesn't help, what this is all about. Bumper security bolts to provide added protection against the theft of your front and rear bumpers. Supplied in individual bumper sets. A, what are they? B, protect against theft of your front and rear bumper. What the hell? Yes, this was one of the earlier cars to have a fully integrated plastic bumper. It was cool, it was cute. It, was, eh, it wasn't exactly unique at the time. But unless you got another XK8, what are you gonna do with it? I, I really don't understand. If anybody's got any intel on this, what the hell? So now we're on to storage solutions. And we've got a nice image there of a car using them all. And I'm attracted to the umbrella in the boot lid because I think that's something I can retrofit quite nicely. So I should be seeing if I can get myself an original umbrella. And it looks like it's actually a decent umbrella going by the silver ferrule. And it's just strapped to the boot lining. Some more images of the boot rack that you could get for the XK8. And all these images are of the convertible. But it does say there, convertible and coupe. Nothing much to see here, child seats. Um, and they're pretty generic. They've just obviously been selected as appropriate rather than being branded or made for the job. Tire pressure gauges, first aid kits, uh, warning light and warning triangle. So nothing much to see here. Another nice image. And we're on to some of the packs of consumables 
Soft top cleaner, quite interesting. Winter care kit, me less interesting. Carpet cleaning kit. Um, I know the plastic container suggests was more than just some squirty and a bit of cloth, so that's that's quite interesting. Um, there is a valet kit down there. And there's a list of all the other packs. And again, as we've discussed previously, and a couple of subscribers have confirmed, the aerial cleaning kit, which I think is hilarious, was a real thing. And um, you could buy it, and some people did buy it. So, uh, yeah, the appropriate cleaner to clean your aerial. I just think that's quite a bizarre thing. I wonder how many other cars... Um, Accessory books would contain aerial cleaner. I don't think many, if any. Splash guards or mud flaps, as we'd call them generally. A windscreen sunshade, reasonably generic item. Some car covers. And a bonnet protector, or car bra, as you'd call it in many other countries. Um, I've never seen one of those on a UK car. I've seen plenty of images of them on cars and in the States. So I do know they're a thing and lots of people use them. But I don't think I've ever seen one in use in the UK. Using those on any car in the UK is quite unusual. It tends to be Japanese imports. Um, and I don't know why, because you know, we get stone chips more than anybody else. Boot liners, boot mats, Again, some nice images. Fog lamp covers, basically just sacrificial lenses and headlamp covers. Something I'm actually interested in is these wind deflectors. I've never had one on a Jag, and I am interested to know how much difference they make, because I, I think the, the Jag does a good job with the side windows up, of deflecting the majority of the wind overview. So I am intrigued to know how good those are. If anybody's got one fitted, I'd love to know your experience of it and whether it's uh, worth the effort, etc. On this side we have the carpets um, and the lambswool rugs at the top seem to be something that is very, very difficult to get hold of. Um, so the lambswool rugs are separate to the carpets. Uh, many of us will have carpets as an option when the car was new but not many will have had the lambswool rugs. They're ridiculously thick things, uh, kind of OTT luxury, if you like. Um, I, I'd like some. And I'm constantly arguing with myself because I do have carpets and I have them in the um, charcoal color. But I think I want rugs and do I want teal? Does teal go with my aquamarine? Or have I got to stick with my charcoal? I don't know, I don't know. Ah, the cup holder. And here we see a picture of one working. They really are delicate. They fall apart in no time at all. And I think repair kits are a big thing for those. Not a good design. Seat covers are quite interesting. They actually look very tailored. Again, I don't think I've ever seen any of those in use. The pollen filter. We've had a few questions about pollen filters and I am doing a video, I mean, I've literally started making a video on where the pollen filter should fit. It's a very rare option. You can retrofit it if you can get hold of the housing. So I'll be showing uh, where that fits quite soon. Interesting image showing imaginary beams coming from the back of the car, um, which are supposed to be parking sensors. Reverse parking aids. A spheric door mirrors. And that's where you can just about see a line, a vertical line on the mirror glass. To the right of that vertical line, the mirror glass is convex. I always have to think hard about those two, concave and convex, giving you a wider angle of view. 
um, and that was an option. And this is unusual to our modern eyes. This is the sat nav option. Look at the location. If you have an XK8, many of you obviously watching this will, you will know that if it's positioned there, you're not gonna see most of it because it's behind the steering wheel. You're gonna bang your knuckles on it. This is, oh, I don't know what you call it, panic inclusion. Because sat nav said just become the thing and um, they haven't got one in the early car. So there it is. That's really, really interesting to see. And also you know it has a remote control unit. Does that mean it wasn't touch screen? Probably. But no matter what controlled it manually without the remote, your fingers are never more than a fingernail's width away from the thing. Remote control, where are you gonna put that? That is really, really odd. Then we go on to luggage. And there's quite a smart set of fabric luggage. I wouldn't say it's tailored to fit the boot, but certainly the set has been made up in order to make best space of the boot. Showing the convertible there. Quite a snazzy looking business case, Napa leather. Um, and a picture of an attractive couple using said luggage. Also a travel kit. And a sports bag. They have some, uh, some regalia, if you like, some, some wares. T-shirt, nice-ish quality looking T-shirt and um, fleece with the XK8 logo on, but nothing desperately interesting, nothing very imaginative about what they've done there. Um, it doesn't have a nice image on it. And I suspect these things will be rare as hen's teeth, not because of limited production runs or the price, just because I wouldn't imagine too many people had them. I know that did, did not probably look after them. I do want an umbrella, not that one, I want the one with a curved handle. There are some sunglasses, but they don't appear to be branded. On the next page, they're showing off some nice uh, leather wallets. So again, it feels a bit rushed to market in terms of, oh, we need to have some stuff for accessories. So let's just get some nice gloves and sell them at a Jaguar dealer. Over on the right there, there are some branded things which are of note. There's a XK8 belt and the um, XK8 logo does appear to at least be a simulation of the right font. There are two watches. There we go. Um, don't strike me as terribly high end, but I mean, there's others out there who can correct me on that. Again, because they were probably not desperately popular, they may actually be of value these days. Being XK8 specific rather than Jaguar. And again, the ties, whoops, get focus, do have an XK8 logo in them. So that might be quite a find. I mean, how many people would even notice that? You know, that the XK8 is only in one of the squares. So that's quite cool. And the XK8 is tiny and on the bottom right of the other tie. So they're quite cool. Um, although the style doesn't appeal to me in the slightest, they are interesting. On this page, there's a few things where I wouldn't mind. 
I don't smoke, I've never smoked, no intention of picking up smoking, but I do like lighters. They're a nice gadget. And if that's not a Zippo, it's a Zippo Styly, and it's branded XK, and I like that, and I think I might like one of those. It's a lapel pin. And XK cufflinks. And on occasion, I do use cufflinks. So um, that might be quite a nice thing. What appears to be a Victinox knife with the XK logo, probably just printed onto the plastic. And over on the right hand side, some of the normal bits and bobs you can collect. But as those pens are again not branded, not interested. The XK8 keyring, probably interesting again for the fact that there's probably not many of them around now. I don't think I've ever seen that keyring. Limited edition prints. A set of golf balls <laughs> with XK8 printed on them. A model car. A beach towel. That's quite interesting. How many of those survived? Whatever got sold. And the auto, auto, autograph, I guess, authorised biography of the XK8. A child's car. I, hmm, it upsets me. <laughs> I don't think that looks anything like an XK8. I know it's only a child's car, but um, yeah, it just, more effort should have been made, I feel. And that concludes our little viewing of the XK accessory brochure. So again, just show you the back, in case you collect these sorts of things, and many people do, it's quite an interesting hobby, collecting the, the literature and advertising wares of uh, car companies. There's the code. There's the date. So that concludes uh, another little video. I hope that was of some interest to some of you guys. If you have seen some of the accessories in there that I think are non-existent or rare, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from anybody who's got an XK8 with the XJ wheels that are advertising here on. Genuinely never seen any. Um, but I, I think it might look good. I think I've seen those wheels on XJ S's as well. I could be wrong, but if it's not that, it's very similar on a late edition of the XJS. Really interested to know if anybody's ever used one of those torches, the rechargeable torch. And love to see an image of it and the charging point, or whatever you want to call it, in the car. So until the next time, please subscribe, please share, and check out all the good literature that is on the community page, most of which has been provided by Gary Van Remortel. And I will see you again on To The Garage real soon. See ya.